What's up everybody? Tech Twins here, and today we're going to be showing you how to make this no solder sim racing button box for under $40. Let's get straight to the video. The parts that you will need to make this button box are in the link in the description below. The first thing that you will need are the buttons. We decided to use 12 16mm buttons on the right of the box and two momentary toggle switches along with one 19mm 5 volt light up self reset power switch on the left. The next thing that you'll need is the brains of the box. We chose an arcade USB encoder pack because of its simple Lego-like no solder design. We will show you how to connect the buttons and switches to the board in a bit. The last thing you will need is the project box from eBay. Once you have all the parts mentioned, then you can move on to the construction and assembly of the box. The assembly of the box is very simple due to the template we made, once again, in the link in the description. All you're gonna need to do is print out the template, Place it on your project's box, and grab a drill with the correct bits listed on the template, and drill away. Once you're back from drilling your project box, the hard part is over. Now for the fun part, time to play some Legos. Well, kind of, you just put all the buttons in, but now is a nice time to mention, before you put all your buttons in, if your project box like ours was bought and you don't like the color of it, you can either spray paint it and leave it overnight, or wrap it in some nice vinyl like I'm going to do. Once you're done painting or vinyling your button box, then you can place the buttons in. Once you're done mounting and bolting all of the buttons and switches onto the front plate on the button box, then it's time to do the wiring. Don't worry, as I mentioned before, this isn't very hard, it won't require you to solder. Another thing to mention right now, if you are going for this button design, you will need 16 of these cables, but this pack only comes with 12. So. In the link in the description, I have a pack for a, another 10 of these that you can just order alongside this for all your buttons to work. Now I'm going to show you how to wire it. So here is your USB motherboard. First, you're going to plug in 12 into this row. I'm only going to be plugging in 6, but you plug in 12 because I have more on the way. For you, these bottom 12 slots will be powering the 12 buttons on your right or left. Now you want to start plugging in these buttons. Honestly, it doesn't matter which one's red and which one's blue. You just plug it over one, then plug in the other. Now repeat that for all 12 of your buttons. Once you have all those plugged in, now you can work on the switches. You're going to have to get a bit creative. For this, I'm using some conductive craft wire and some electricity tape. First, find the end of it. Next, you can cut about six inches of it. Then you're gonna wanna wrap it inside the holes of the switch. Then grab one end of these, slide it through, push it all the way through. Now you can grab a piece of electrical tape and wrap it around. Now once you're done with your finished one, you plug them into here. So you take your first one, doesn't matter which one, plug it into there, and repeat for the other switch. Now for the last button, the power switch. For this button you're actually going to need two cables to power it. One for the LEDs and one for the function. I just realized that in the video I didn't really show you where to plug them in for the power switch, the one on screen right now, so I'm going to show you that right now. So you see the blue arrows? Those are to power the switch to make sure that its function works properly. You're going to use your first cable and plug the two switches on the top and the bottom. That's what works for both me and my brother, but if it doesn't then you can just go over to your USB game controllers and make sure that the arrow in the center is in the center when it's not pressed and is somewhere different when you press it. And then the arrows on the left and the right of the switch, those are just for the LEDs. You don't have to use that if you don't want to, but I think it looks nice. Now's a good time to plug it into your computer and test if everything works. I'm just taking a piece of double-sided tape and mounting the board to the other side of the project box. Once you know that your button box works, you can screw it in and you're done. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video. Peace.